Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make use of the ID maps that are available with uh, some of our materials um, using Photoshop. Now here's one of our textures, a carpet texture. Um, and below it here in Photoshop, I have the ID map for it. Now this is what an ID map looks like. It's just a series of basic colors that define the different areas of the, uh, the, the main color texture. And it allows you to isolate those areas to make adjustments to just those parts. Now, for uh, demonstration, I'm actually going to use this material, uh, Carpet Loop and Cut Herringbone 002. Um, and I've already brought in the color texture for that material into Photoshop. So what I'll do now is I'm going to turn that into a layer. And we'll just name this the color map. So we know what we're doing. So at this point, what I want to do is navigate to the folder for that material and also bring in the ID map. There we go. Now I'm going to lower that uh, or place that below the color map for now and name it ID map. And let's just turn off visibility of the color map so we can take a look at it. So we've only got two. Uh, two masks within this ID map on this particular one, which is why I chose it as a good example, because it's nice and easy to work on. Um, if you look at the color texture, the, the red sort of color um, highlights the darker areas of the texture, and the blue area um, gives us the the, uh, the brighter parts, yeah? So what we'll do to start off with is go to select and then color range. And what I want to do is isolate the red part of the mask. Um, and in the preview here, it will show a, a nice kind of black and white preview. And you can also adjust the, they call it the fuzziness factor, but it's basically like the transition between the two. Um, on some materials, you, you might need to fiddle a little bit with that value. Um, but let's hit okay on that, and that will select that area. Okay, so now we can go over to the color map and go to image, sorry, layer, uh, new adjustment layer, and let's put in a brightness and contrast. Excellent, so we have a typical brightness and contrast in place now, um, which will only affect the areas um, that are highlighted by that mask that we just created. It automatically put that mask in there. Now it's the darker areas, and what I want to do overall with this texture for, in this example is take these darker areas and make them almost black, uh, and then the lighter areas, I want to change color to say blue, okay? So for this, we want to uh, lower the brightness. You'll see it's just affecting that area that's been masked. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much all we need to do with that particular layer. So let's go back to the ID map and do that again. So color range, but this time grab the blue part. There we go. And we'll just do exactly what we just did before. We'll add in another adjustment layer, but this time a hue and saturation. And it has got, a, as you can see, a different mask assigned to it now. And then when we change this value, it's only, only gonna affect the brighter areas of the texture. So if I go to, say, somewhere over here, make it a blue color, maybe increase the saturation a little bit. And there we go. That's literally it. Um, using the ID map, I've pretty much completely changed the original texture uh, in terms of the way it looks and whatnot. Now, what you could do from this point is just save this off as a uh, new color map and bring that in instead of the original one. What you could also do though, is if you go over to, let's say, pick this mask, this is the darker area mask, go to channels, turn off RGB, let me just turn the mask on first, and then turn off RGB. The mask is down here at the bottom. You can actually just save out these masks as uh, black and white images, yeah? So I could save off this mask, and I could jump over to the uh, other mask and do the same with that, and save off that one. And then I'd have two masks, which I can then bring directly into whatever 3D application I'm using and make adjustments within the material settings and the nodes rather than within Photoshop. So you've got you've got two options you can go down. Um, below this video, I'll paste a few examples of what you could use these masks for um, in various applications and whatnot. So in summary, we've loaded up one of our carpet materials in Photoshop, namely the, the color map and the ID map.
and then use the ID map to alter specific parts of the color texture. And we looked at how to export those masks um, to be used directly within a 3D application.